So I just wanted to do a video real quick um, to show you guys how I put this uh, CD changer in from a Lincoln Navigator. Uh, it came out of a 99 Lincoln Navigator. Um, the video starts with um, the CD changer already removed and the wire harness removed up until the junction point right under the dash. Because say like the Navigator will have a center console right here. The CD changer goes in there and it has wires that go up to a, con a connector up here. And that's where I disconnect the wires from and that's basically where the video starts. I'm going to basically show you uh, what I went through to uh, cut and splice the wires, things like that. If you guys need the schematics, I can put it on the website and uh, show you guys. Here's what plugged into the CD changer. And I'm tracing all those cables back and I'm deep pinning them from this. And what you do is you just shove a uh, small screwdriver in the center right there and pry back the plastic and pull these pins out. So here's F-150 schematics for the CD changer. But these wires right here are the same no matter whether it's the navigator. See this one's coming from the CD changer. Navigator or the F-150. And then three, these three wires right here would uh, on the navigator actually go somewhere else coming from the CD changer. But since it's the F-150, we're going to take these uh, wires straight from the CD changer um, to the radio. And then two wires, you know, a ground and a power. So, And this, when I got this truck, all these wires were cut. And uh, someone had given me these plugs. And when I put a radio in it, I put an Explorer radio in it. So, um, I'm not really sure, but I might have, you know, did the wiring different than it was originally. But it works with the stereo. But I just wanted to double check. I got in here and made sure there was no CD changer wire coming through the loom. It's literally just the wires for the speakers. So, all right. So this is the stock wire to the 99 F150. This this big plug right here mainly does like your stereo stuff. This one already has the CD wires. There's a broken wire too. This guy has to be repaired. This already has the CD wires plugged into it, so I was confused. Then, so I found, going through schematics, I found this connector right here, and this goes to the, this goes to that plug up there, and for the CD player to plug into, it was just right here with the other plug, you know, plugged in it. If I don't have to, I'm not going to cut this up, so but should be able to just plug the uh, CD player in here, and then uh, it should work. So on the navigator in the same spot, under the kick panel on the passenger side, I found another pin, and I'm guessing this works with a lot of that, but because it would go into like a phone or some other things, some of these wires don't match. So, But it gave me the male uh, pins I needed that I was missing from the blank connector. So I depinned all those, and what I'm going to do is solder them now into all the wires that came out of because see I got to convert these pins to this type of pin so I'm gonna basically all these are gonna get cut and then I'll solder them into these leads and then it can go back into the pin the one thing that kinda was confusing at first is this ground right here is a big ground wire but if you trace it back yeah right here if you trace the big ground wire back it splits into two small ones and that's because that ground was also used for the temperature control in the center console. So theoretically, we could just take out the big wire and uh, extend it with another thin wire like this into one of these pins and it should be fine. Because, you know, ultimately a thin wire, only a thin wire went to the CD changer. It was just a, a thick one was ran to run two grounds. Okay, so here's the pin out from the connector that was on the truck. We took it off and it had the blank one. So we're gonna need to duplicate that. This is the navigator. And then here's like most of our CD stuff and then some other wires are, are positive and are negative. And you can see the negative has a splice and so does the positive and there were some other splices. And of course this was a heavier gauge wire coming down here and then it's split into two smaller gauge wires. The colors here are all basically the same. For some reason, the power wire is a different color. 
Um, so that was the navigator and here's the truck. So you can see they're basically the same except the truck doesn't have any splices in it. So I'm having to remove the splices because you know I'm using all the stuff from the navigator. And you know if I was going to a junkyard and getting all this stuff it would have been way easier to just get the harness from the F-150. But basically it's all the same. These three wires right here would normally go to like a cellular thing or get routed somewhere else and then probably end up back in the radio. With the F-150 it doesn't matter. All those go from the CD changer directly to the radio. Which is that's the radio right here. Um, again, so it has the same power wires, same ground. This is the CD changer. Wires coming off of it. Uh, just no splices, a uh, different color wire. And so basically we just got to get rid of these splices, cut all the ends off this wire to fit the pin that would like go in the truck, which are uh, these things, you know, to go in this connector. And then it should just plug right in because the truck's actually wired for it till this junction point, till that clip junction point. So, so I'll go ahead and make the loom with the pins out of the connector and then I'll have to go follow this connector and put the pins in. Except some of the colors won't match, like I said the power cable and stuff. So I'll know when it's calling for like the green and violet, it really needs to be the white and violet in its place. I'll go ahead and uh, fix the splices extend any wires that had splices so they were the same, cut off all the connectors, put the same connectors on that would work uh, for directly plugging it on, on the truck side, on the F-150, and then I'll uh, go ahead and reference the pin out and uh, plug them in correctly and it should just plug right into the truck. Uh, the, this had the same clip as the truck did, but I figured, you know, they kind of reroute and then it comes back up through the dashboard to come out through the center console. So they're real similar in the main wire harness. It's just additions and add-ons and stuff. So. so this is where one of the splices were. I went ahead and uh, you know ripped the wire completely apart, twisted it back on itself and soldered it. And I'll uh, shrink wrap over it. Uh, so I'm just you know fixing all the splices first. Let's see where's another one. Cause see, this is where the black cable was. So now it's shorter. Um, Cause it had the thicker uh, wire. And I was able to go on another end of the wire loom and get the same uh, black wire. All right, so here's the navigator uh, plug that's coming out of the CD changer. And then, you know, I've, put all the splices back together and fix it so I got to shrink wrap that and then it all comes to the end and then here's the you know the one ground I do extend it's going to get cut off right here so then all these tips are going to get cut off because these aren't the right size pin and then I'll solder the correct size pins on and then then those once the pins are on they can go on the clip and it'll plug right in the truck I just got to make sure to cross reference everything that the pins are going in the right spot these cables where they come out of the stereo are basically basically the same like Crown Vic Mark 8 uh, Mercury Marquee the F-150 the Navigators Expedition where it comes out here is the same then it starts to change once it goes to splicing or how many cables maybe some of these might get routed through other things um, but fundamentally this harness right here is the same thing and then you can take that and adapt it um, if I were to do this again differently um, cause right now, you know, I'm just doing it on super budget with the one I already have. I would go to the F-150 and I would pull the wire loom from the kick panel to the back from, to the CD changer and just pull that wire loom and then you take that and it'll plug right in. I don't have that right now. Plus I wanted to run the CD changer up in the front anyways, so I could, you know, get to it easier while I'm driving. So with the connectors going on right here, I'm making sure they're short. So by the time I shrink wrap over it, you won't even notice this other color. So all my color matching will be going off on uh, the colors from the navigator. I won't have these random uh, color connectors in the way. All right, so basically got all the soldering done. That's to the CD changer. This is to the wire harness in the truck. 
And then I just got to go and look at the schematics and put the correct wire in the correct pin slot. What's cool is all these CD players should be the same on the CD side, but if I ever have to move wires around, I can just unpin it and uh, recorrect it here. And theoretically, any CD changer from any of the, like, you know, the 90s Fords, I could uh, put in here. So, in my truck now. All right, here it is all done. We got it all pinned in. Should be spot on. I uh, put a sheath over it. So now I can plug it into the CD player and plug it into the harness. And that should run right up to the radio. All right, well, I got everything working. Here's the CD player. It's wired in uh, to the harness. If, I were to rec if someone's gonna do this with an F-150, um, I would recommend getting the the harness and it probably runs you know down through here to a cd player back here um as far as i know here but i like the idea of having it i'm going to put it up here under the dash somewhere i like that idea because then you know i could get to it easy when i'm driving if you get, anyone needs any help or questions about it just ask me this is just a you know something i did because i had the cd player and i wanted to make it happen so it's working here let me all right, so this is basically what I got going on. I cut the cup holder down and then uh, put the CD thing in, in its place. And I got this tab right here all plastic welded. And so that'll clip under the dashboard. And then see how it has this uh, tab right there. So the cup holder will just sit there. And when this screws in, it'll just hold that part down and this part will clip under the dash. So. All right, so I redid the mounting part a little bit. I, uh, I had this kind of going up or at an angle and it was just you know, making it too tight. So I got another piece that I cut off and uh, made this little hook. There we go, I gotta find the sweet spot. And then, you know, I got it, then it hooks right in behind the dash and it's pretty, you know, it's pretty solid just sitting here, it doesn't like. So then this will go, uh, this will sit right here and clamp down. I mean, I could always screw this down too, but this will uh, go ahead and just push down on here and uh, you know just you know me holding it there you see how solid it is already so that'll be good to go that was part of the reason I had to readjust it was because this uh, was just a little too tight against the dash so now uh, it comes in and out easy all right so I went ahead and put a couple screws in it and then it hooks in right there behind the dash and you know it's pretty solid and then the wire runs up here under the dash and then uh, goes into the kick panel where I had the plug. So that's pretty decent. I had barely just enough room to run that. Should have had the wire a little bit longer. You know, basically just enough room to come in here and put that in. And I'll go ahead and uh, re-put the cup holder back. All right, so there it is, all back installed. Good to go, pretty solid. So yeah, it's working, looks good right there.